Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Wenxin Ye. I am professor of history and director of the Institute of East Asian Studies. On behalf of my colleagues in the field of East Asian Studies on the Berkeley campus, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Chairman Liu Chuanzhi on his first visit to the Berkeley campus. It's the honor and pleasure of the Institute of East Asian Studies to host and organize this event. Before we get started, I would like to um, offer you a couple of um, technical reminders. First of all, this entire event is being video recorded. Secondly, the presentation will take place in Chinese and simultaneous translation will be available. There are headsets out there, so if you would like to make use of the service, please be sure to avail yourself of the opportunity. And then, before we get started, we would, first of all, for background information, view a PowerPoint presentation about Lenovo, which will contribute to our understanding or appreciation of the presentation that's going to come thereafter. So the PowerPoint, please. Ladies and gentlemen, before the, pres before the speech now is the introduction about Lenovo. Please be noted that Lenovo was pre previously called Legend from 1984 to 2003. In 2003, the company changed its name and logo from Legend to Lenovo. This is the birthplace of Lenovo. In 1984, Mr. Liu Chuanzhi led 10 researchers at the Chinese Academy of Sciences to found Lenovo with an initial funding of 200,000 RMB or 30,000 US dollars. This 20 square meter front gate reception room is where Lenovo started. At that time, China was in the process of transiting from the planned economy to the market economy. People had no idea about market and the legal system was very insufficient and immature. This 11 people barely knew anything about business management and had no experience of running companies. These early founders earned the first sum of capital for the company through distributing products for famous multinational companies such as AST, HP, and IBM. What's more important, by working as a distributor, they learned and figured out the principles and know-how of operating businesses and honed their management skills. In 1990, the first computer branded as Legend, a 286 personal computer debuted. It was well received at the Sibit Electronics Trade Show at Germany. In the 1990s, the landscape of China's PC industry changed dramatically. The government canceled the import quota system and significantly cut import tariffs. So many multinational computer companies entered the China market. China's PC industry entered the WTO ahead of other industries. Domestic PC manufacturers were under a serious challenge of life and death. Under the leadership of Mr. Liu Chuanzhi, Lenovo conducted thorough analysis and discussions and decided to develop its own brand of computers. It adjusted the organizational structure and appointed Mr. Yang Yuanqing, who was 29 years old then, to be the general manager of its PC business unit. It started to compete head-to-head -head against multinational giants. After several years of fierce competitions and learning via practice, Lenovo figured out and summarized a set of principles and know-how about business operation in this industry. In 1996, Lenovo became the number one PC vendor in China in terms of market share. Then it became the number one in Asia Pacific, excluding Japan, and has maintained the position since then. 
For the further growth of the company, Lenovo decided to expand to overseas markets and go global. In December 2004, Lenovo announced its acquisition of IBM's global PC business, which was described by observers as an act of a snake swallowing an elephant. Many observers were skeptical of this move. Prior to 2000, Lenovo manufactured computers under its own brand, and at the same time worked as a distributor for multinational PC brands in China. To fully leverage the advantages in both areas, in 2000, directed by Mr. Liu Chuanzhi, the company voluntarily divided itself into two spin-offs: Lenovo and Digital China. Lenovo focuses on manufacturing computers under its own brand. While Digital China focuses on distributing for other brands, Mr. Liu passed the helm of each of these two companies to two young men, respectively, Mr. Yang Yuanqing and Mr. Guo Wei. Digital China, under Mr. Guo Wei's leadership, is China's leading IT integration and service provider, and has been the clear market leader in IT product distribution for years. It works with more than 100 top-tier IT brands in the world as their trustable strategic partner. Its revenue in 2009 was 6.4 billion U.S. dollars. When Mr. Yang Yuanqing took the helm of Lenovo, its revenue in 2000 was 3 billion U.S. dollars. Just now, we introduced about the PC business of Lenovo. The company actually has another important history. Which is the diversified development of Lenovo's parent, Legend Holdings. After the spin-off of the two companies, Mr. Liu Chuanzhi started another new plan, based on previous foundation in IT business. Legend Holdings, under the leadership of Mr. Liu, entered the new areas of venture capital, private equity, and real estate. Legend Capital. Hongli Capital and Raycon Real Estate were established one after another, representing a diversified business portfolio of Legend Holdings. After ten years of development of, and growth, Legend Capital and Hongli Capital have become the leader in their respective categories in China. The funds under management by both of these firms combined total 5.5 billion U.S. dollars altogether. They invested into more than 140 portfolio companies. They have reaped handsome returns for their investors. These two investment firms and their team members were ranked top in numerous rankings in China and outside of China. Raycon Real Estate focuses on two major areas: the development of residential housing and the holding and operation of properties. With regional divisions in more than 10 cities across China. It is a top tier, is a tier one real estate developer in China with high profitability. After 26 years of tireless hard work, Legend Holdings has grown from one with only 200,000 RMB funding to one with a total asset of 17 billion US dollars, annual revenue of 22 billion US dollars, and a total number of staffs of 42,000. In 2010, Legend Holdings formulated its mid-term goal and plan. Through investment, it will operate and nurture multiple core assets in certain industries to achieve further exp expansion into the next level in big strides. Legend Holdings, as an entity, aims to get listed at the Hong Kong stock market in 2014. Last month, Mr. Liu Chuanzhi was invited by the White House to attend a roundtable meeting where U.S. President Barack Obama and China President Hu Jintao were present. Participating leaders of top American and Chinese firms in this meeting discussed about how both could contribute to the economic prosperity of both countries. These executives put forward some suggestions to the heads of both states. This is the end. Of the inter introduction about Lenovo. So, without further ado, let's turn to the speech that's going to present it by Mr. Liu. The Institute of East Asian Studies is very grateful 
to Vice Chancellor of Research, Graham Fleming, who has agreed to be the chair and moderator of our program for the rest of the afternoon. Um, let me present to you Vice Chancellor Fleming. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce Leo Schwanger, um, chairman of, of and founder of Lenovo Group, as you heard. Um, Mr. Leo is well known throughout the international community and highly regarded as one of the key players in the globalization of China's economy. He's been named Fortune Magazine's Asian Businessman of the Year, one of Time Magazine's top 25 most influential leaders in business, and an outstanding individual in promoting China-U.S. relations by the National Committee of U.S.-China Relations. As you, as you saw from that beginning at the Chinese Academy of Sciences, he's come a very long way from the time in 1984 when he and 10 other colleagues established New Technology Developer Inc., the, the precursor of Lenovo Group. Uh, developing Lenovo into a multinational company with global impact. Uh, today, he's going to be sharing with us his experiences surrounding Lenovo's acquisition of IBM PC in 2005. The purchase of IBM PC for $1.75 billion was an earth-shaking event in the business world, as it was the first successful takeover of a foreign brand by a Chinese company. Lenovo is, you heard, it was, it was like uh, the snake swallowing the elephant. Um, and its success was by no means obvious. Earlier on this afternoon, Mr. Liu was joking with us that whether they succeeded or they failed, what, what happened would be a great topic for study in business schools. Um, as you saw from the title and uh, the, the numbers you heard, of course, it's been a great success. And in fact, since the economic downturn in the last five quarters, Lenovo has averaged 20% growth, far larger than any of the other PC manufacturers. Um, and as you heard also, he was um, one of four Chinese entrepreneurs who accompanied uh, Chinese President Hu Jintao and his visit to the White House and the rest of the U.S. Um, how do you, how does a snake swallow an elephant? Uh, is it simply size or are the culture, cultural differences between these two organizations radically different? And how do you manage the company whilst keeping its talents and vigor in such a large transition. This is something I think that has a strong resonance in many, many dimensions as we prepare our students at Berkeley for global citizenship, as we think how to run Berkeley more effectively and efficiently in times when the state is investing less in us and we have to, we have to do our own business better. And I think we, we will all learn much from Mr. Liu's insights. Um, in fact, at the end of the talk, we've set aside quite a reasonable time for us all to engage in questions, and we hope that we will have a stimulating discussion then. I'll come back up, and we have two microphones that uh, you can get hold of and uh, join in the discussion. So, Chairman Liu, on behalf of the Institute of East Asian Studies and, in fact, of all UC Berkeley, we're honored to have you speak to our community today. We look forward to hearing about the successful acquisition of IBM PC by Lenovo. Thanks to the Chancellor for encouraging me 
I and my fellow colleagues, uh, we came to UC Berkeley campus to communicate with you. We feel very honored and happy. The Chinese government recently uh, raised a new uh, policy, and that is China's economy will, the, the driver of Chinese economy previously was uh, export and investment. Now the Chinese government emphasized that domestic consumption will be the driver of domestic economy. By doing so, Chinese companies and American companies will have a lot of opportunities. Uh, I want to cite an example. Uh, Lenovo, at 2004, right before the acquisition of IBM PC, its total shipment in China was 4 million units. Last year, that number rose to 18 million un units. Such a huge jump. It demonstrates that China's market has huge potentials. The incremental amount was from uh, lower tier countryside and rural areas and small townships. It also demonstrates that our collaboration with IBM's PC is a success. Because of the Think brand from IBM, we were able to, in China, to sell so much in China. So the uh, complementary collaboration between Chinese firms and American firms will benefit both and will also benefit the economies of both countries. So I wanted to use this example as a starter as my presentation about the case of our acquisition of IBM is very appropriate. Now I'm going to start my uh, speech. Because just now uh, you saw the presentation showing this small uh, gate reception room. This is where uh, the company started. So uh, we are showing again to give you a deeper impression. We, we started in this room. The second slide uh, shows the structure of our company. The, the organize, organizational structure. The, the top box is called Legend Holdings, which is the parent company. The uh, subsidiary, the very left on the left, is Lenovo, which is a PC, our PC subsidiary. We started from this company. The, it is it is also the entity which acquired IBM's PC. So today's story mostly focused on this one. The next slide. This slide shows the current status of Lenovo, and uh, we already introduced just now, so I'm not going to go to details. The next slide. This slide is very important. I started uh, the company in 1984. At that time, I was a researcher at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. We experienced a lot of hardships in that process. For example, we didn't know anything about market, didn't know how to run companies. At that time, we uh, worked as a distributor for IBM and HP, and we learned what is market and how to manage companies. At that time, China was under the, under the transitional period from transiting from planned economy to market e economy. During that transition, there were a lot of the legal system was very immature and insufficient, which posed a lot of challenges to us. This graph, what is me the meaning of this graph? Prior to the 1990s, China, in order to protect its domestic uh, industries, 
in order to uh, in order to fend or to uh, to obstruct obstruct foreign companies from entering the country using the means of high tariffs and 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 quotas import quota system. The result of that policy was that the uh, informatization of various industries was hindered. Because as an enclosed country, the quality of the domestic computers was very lousy and the price was very high. Given this situation, the Chinese government uh, adjusted its policy. So after the 1990s, the government canceled the uh, Im the computer import quota system and also uh, significantly cut import tariffs. So a lot of foreign uh, companies started to enter China, including IBM and Compaq. And then. The uh, the entry of those foreign companies helped a lot of industries in their in terms of their computerization, but it posed li life and death threaten to Chinese domestic makers. There was a uh, famous uh, computer company backed up by the government called Great Wall Computer. Within one year. In, within that year of 1993, that company and that brand disappeared in face of the competitions. At that time, Lenovo was a very small company. We only accounted for uh, three, around 3% three of market share of, in terms of founding technology and management expertise. We were dwarfed by those American and European giants. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. <sighs> We did not focus on researching how good our competitors were. We focused on what shortcomings, what defects we had. We found a lot of uh, issues with ourselves. So we uh, revamped the company's structure and we adjusted our business models and also picked up and appointed a 20-year-old young man, Mr. Yang Yuanqing, today's CEO of Lenovo, to be the head of that business. S starting from 1994, we step by step uh, grew and, uh, and improved. So the market share incre increased from 2.7% to 27%. How did we do it? I wanted to cite several examples to illustrate how we did it. I want to give you three examples. The first one is about our study and analysis about cost. At that time, after very thorough analysis, we discovered that in the computer industry, the cost of components accounted for 84% of the total cost of a computer. Human labor, marketing sales, and, and the other stuff combined only accounted for 14%. In the computer industry, uh, uh, components like CPU, DRAM, and hard drives, their technologies uh, were upgrading all the time. So the uh, prices of those components uh, were very volatile and changed very quickly. In this case, the length of the inventory is a critical factor for cost. For example, in 1996, in July, August, and September, in July, the 
DRAM, is, which is the memory within a uh, computer. The unit price was 16 US dollars. And then in September, with only three months of time, it dropped dramatically to $2 in September. So three months, you can see the gap and the job. It illustrated that if a company had a long time of inventory, if you acquired, procured DRAMs at a price of $16 in July, and you could not sell out your computers, in, and then in September or October, if you sell them, and then your cost, your cost, the gap of the disparity of cost would be two hundred dollars per box. This research gave us a lot of uh, revelation how we can uh, reduce the cost. For uh, computer manufacturers, all of us had to procure chips from Intel and, and DRAM chips. When in the procurement, we had to uh, make the procurement in advance and plan in advance. So if a company made a plan and the lead time was too long, and then you face the uh, significant job of, of, of cost. So we, we had to focus on the, uh, the fo forecasting of the market demand and also what is the lead time, most proper lead time for procurement. So we came up with a very localized method because later on, uh, when ERP was available, all these uh, all these measures were done with uh, can be done by ERP. So we came up with some localized uh, uh, ways of doing it without ERP. So in 1996, we uh, we reduced uh, our sale prices of computers by six times, but our profits increased. But why didn't com competitors do the same thing? Because our fellow uh, manufacturers in China, they didn't get the trick yet. Those American and European companies, even though they know they knew this, but because their headquarters were located in the U.S. and Europe, their China uh, managers were not did not have the authority to do the adjustment or they could not uh, make the adjustment of their pricing timely. So we leveraged our understanding of the China market. We uh, got an upper hand against those competitions by working on cost. Another example, in the computer industry, manufacturers like us, we had to sell through channel partners. So. So it, the uh, loans to our uh, channels, we usually loan our products to our distributors and give them three months of uh, credit. If we s sell a lot, we have to we we have we have to be a little bit loose towards our uh, channels. So we might want to extend the uh, loan period from two months to three months, so that channels will commit more amount. But the possibility of getting uh, debt debts or debt accounts receivables will be very, uh, the possibility will be very high. For example, one competitor, Compaq, wanted to uh, increase its market. It loosened its policy on uh, credit on uh, channels. The result was that in that year, it incurred a total of 80 millions of US dollars of debt debts. So that company uh, disappeared from the, from the China market. Because Lenovo did very uh, thorough analysis about how to do the uh, loans and the credit to, ch to channels and how to manage channels, offering them uh, proper support. We have very detailed and a very uh, thought after plans. And our that the rate of debt loans against ch uh, channel of us is five out of ten thousand. And multinational companies' uh, rate was four out of 1,000. So this uh, generated uh, our advantages in cost. 
Another, uh, another example about technology. At that time, we was a small company. It was impossible for us to invest, make a lot of investment to make breakthrough technologies. It was not realistic to do that. So we uh, researched about the market, and we uh, made use of some mature technologies. Uh, and for example, in 1998 and 1999, uh, when the uh, internet was uh, was becoming popular, we discovered that uh, consumers, it was very cumbersome for consumers to get onto the internet on their computers because they had to, uh, because at that time most people used desktops, they had to open their box, they had to install modern, they had to install uh, software and they had to register at telecom operators, they had to, these three same things. So it was very uh, difficult for them. And then uh, Lenovo uh, came up with one model of computer with the, f with the feature of one touch, one button online. We, s we, pr we solved all these procedures for customers. So they touch one button, they can go on to internet. But with this product, we managed to increase our uh, market share by seven percentage point. And then we, uh, in the same manner, we uh, came up with another technology called One Key Recovery. If your uh, computer cracked, you just touch, punch one button, and the computer will uh, got right automatically. These technologies are not extremely like uh, uh, very. Uh, difficult technologies, but it really helped us. This kind of te product technologies really helped us and uh, helped us uh, keep very high profit margin and generate uh, advantages for us. This graph uh, shows that by 2001, our market share was 27.5%. Uh, but in 2002 and 2003, our market share dropped from 27% to 25 and then 24%. Why? Because it was because of an American, famous American PC maker a very competent PC maker, which conquered, conquered the U.S. market and, and the European market all the way, because it has a very uh, new uh, business model. They, for key accounts or commercial clients, they used direct sales model with channels. So when it entered China, we, we couldn't compete and we lost it. So. And then the management and the core uh, key talents had meetings to analyze the com competitors' ways of doing it. And we delivered one thing which was considered Im impossible. We utilized two different channels to sell to customers. One type of customers was commercial clients. We used direct sales. Because for this type of clients, if you used channels, it was very difficult to under know the needs of customers. It was hard to sell. And then the second type was customers, was consumers and SMBs. And for this kind of customers, we use channels. We, we did both at the same time. Other companies in, and a lot of American companies defeated by this American giant couldn't do this dual models. A lot of media in China and Hong Kong media and mainland China commented that it was impossible for us to run the, this dual models because we did very thorough analysis. We had for the supply chain, for the value chain, for whatever parts which deserves overlapping, we overlap them. For whatever parts which needs to be divided, we divide it. Since then, we, our revenue and profit um, surpass our competitions, American competition competitor. I was very stressed at that time. It was 2003. Why the timing was the timing was very important because we were uh, negotiating negotiating with uh, IBM about the uh, uh, 
it was in 2004. We were doing the negotiation with I IBM. If our competition against this American giant didn't work out, our stock price will drop significantly, and then the acquisition of IBM PC would not work. Because for that acquisition, 50% of the funding was cash, and 50% was our shares. If our stock price dropped, we had to use more shares. So I was was very nervous. I went to the field to know the situation. This battle, for this battle, we, we won. It shows that we had very, we have very thorough and deep knowledge and and insights about the industry. And it also showed that Lenovo was a company with very strong execution capability. Why we had strong execution capability, I will explain a little bit later. So, in 2004, after one year of uh, negotiation, after one year of negotiation, in December, on December the 8th, we announced the news. After the, our announcement, uh, we incurred a lot of attention. This uh, photo, this graph showing a snake swallowing an elephant was from a Chinese uh, media outlet. A lot of Chinese media and industry uh, observers said they applauded, they applauded for our courage, but not for uh, the for the possibility of success, because they thought that the possibility of succeeding was very slight, because the success rate of acquisition, even like domestic mergers and acquisitions, was very low. The rate was 25 percent, not to mention such a case, a small Chinese company acquiring an IBM division. In that year, I remember in the end of that year, I was giving a lecture at the Business School of Peking University. Uh, the uh, the uh, audience were EMBA students. I, I, I asked one question to the audience. Do, do you think, uh, what do you think of our acquisition of IBM PC? Do you think, uh, what do you think of the possibility of, of succeeding? Uh, among the 90-something uh, attendees, only three people raised their hands. I asked say that whoever think, yes, please raise your hand. Only three raised their hands. Only two people raised their hands. Who are Lenovo employees? So actually only one outsider thought that it would work. But this people was this person was one of my acquaintances. The, what was the reality? We have another graph. In 2007, in, in that fiscal year, right before one year prior to the uh, financial crisis, the uh, financial data shows uh, some implications. Prior to the acquisition, Lenovo, even though it was very successful, its revenue was only 2.9 billion US dollars. After the acquisition in 2007, the revenue reached 16.9 billion US dollars, and net income or profit was uh, 140 million US dollars pre-acquisition. Post-acquisition, it was 484 million US dollars. And the global market share was 2.4 percent pre-acquisition and 77 uh, percent post-acquisition. And the cash revenue and the cash reserve was uh, has increased a lot. We used 1.25 billion U.S. dollars, and now our cash reserve was, uh, in the previous quarter was 2.36 billion U.S. dollars. So what kind of uh, issues did we think about prior to the uh, acquisition? Because we think that the acquisition was a big thing. It was a, a senior exec, executive from IBM who approached us 
to explore the possibility of acquisition. Uh, facing this uh, uh, proposal, we invite uh, we invited McKinsey and uh, Goldman Sachs as our consultants. They proposed that it was possible to do it because we, we couldn't quite rely on their suggestions because we knew that no matter whether the acquisition would be successful, we have to pay them consulting fees. And then we hi we uh, hired another uh, P a PE firm from the U.S., General Atlantic, American a PE firm, and uh, consult them whether uh, whether uh, they wanted to participate in this uh, acquisition. They were very positive about it, which gave us a lot of confidence because they have to contribute funding. So we worked together with the help of those consultants. Uh, we, we thought of four issues, questions. Why would IBM sell it? It's because they, it's a money losing uh, business operation. And then why uh, IBM, it was money losing under IBM's leadership. Why could we turn over the business? Thirdly, what do we really want to obtain out of the deal? Fourthly, what risks are there and how can we uh, overcome them? I want to say what do we want really out of the deal first is the brand, uh, the Think brand. Uh, today, in retrospect, in retrospect, we think this is a very right decision. In our uh, negotiation, IBM agreed to sell that brand to us forever. We, c we can own that brand forever. We were not that uh, relieved because I, because we want IBM to accompany Think for five years. But actually, uh, in the third year, we we uh, replaced the IBM name with Lenovo. So today, the Think brand is one of our major sub-brands. The majority of our profits come from Think. It shows that we really get the value. The second thing that we uh, bought was technology. Today's Lenovo has three uh, technology centers, one in China, one in Yamato, Japan, and one was one is in Raleigh, North Carolina in the U.S. The uh, Yamato lab was actually the, uh, the inventor of ThinkPad. And Japanese are very... And when doing research and development, they have a spirit of being meticulous and uh, detail-oriented. And the uh, R&D center in Raleigh has a global perspective. And they work, so they have different perspectives from their counterparts in China. So this kind of complementary nature of collaboration gives us a lot of uh, inspiration. So the three uh, parties work together uh, under a unified uh, theme. This kind of work mode gives us a lot of advantages. So after the uh, acquisition, uh, the uh, technology we acquired, so in addition to products and uh, patents, what we bought are the uh, collaboration by human beings. Thirdly, we bought international global resources. Lenovo was previously a Chinese company, even though that we were very, we had a lot of uh, advantages in China. But after we uh, uh, went overseas, we, uh, we we were not capable in navigating the market. We didn't know how to manage international teams, how to work with uh, overseas sales channels and an internet how to 
conduct the operations of an international board and uh, how to handle the legal affairs overseas. So after the acquisition, we inherited all of these resources. So this is, this is something that we successfully obtained. So with so many good stuff, so then uh, why don't everyone do the acquisitions? Actually, acquisition is something very tough. So we we thought uh, thought of three uh, thought about three major risks. The first risk is risk of losing market. That is, when we acquired uh, IBM IBM's ThinkPad. But, but the Chinese entity who acquired it, whether the uh, old previous customers would buy in the new owner, whether whether we can retain the customers, it's, it's uncertain. We did very thorough, thorough analysis, and we, we took a lot of measures, and finally we solved this issue. For example, we uh, we work after we worked with IBM. IBM sent 2,000 sales people to uh, previous uh, key accounts and commercial clients to communicate and convince them that this company will remain as an international company. For example, we set dual headquarters, one in the U.S. and one in China. So. So the sales will still remain in the U.S. And the interfacing people will remain the same as, as, as the past. So the external parties would not feel any differences of the company. So the brand, the, the negative impact on the brand will be minimized. And also about uh, people. We, we take some measures in managing the people in retaining the people. The biggest issue actually was cultural conflicts. Uh, two entities uh, went together. The uh, senior level management, for example, board members and the t uh, top senior management team, Chinese and Westerners, how can they work together? Whether they can achieve agreement, alignment, and how they can lead, these are the challenges. The reality show that the third risk was the biggest one. According to our knowledge, um, before prior to us, uh, two companies from Taiwan and mainland China did uh, large-scale acquisitions. And and and, they, and uh, those two cases uh, was were not successfully, and their major issues also were cultural issues. So we we were prepared uh, somewhat, but actually we we, we, we faced that reality uh, of the issues. This graph shows the uh, result after the financial crisis. T in 2009, uh, when the uh, financial crisis occurred, from 2008 to, to 2009, when the uh, crisis, the recession occurred, Lenovo's uh, profit significantly dropped and incurred large amounts of losses. We had have we had never had such big losses prior to that. The board took decisive measures. In February 2009, we, we did a lot of changes in organizational structure. We replaced uh, leaders. After the uh, change in organizational structure, we saw the effects. I, myself, uh, after the acquisition, I no longer took the post of chairman. Mr. Yang Yunqing was the uh, chairman after the acquisition. That way. And now um, the, I resumed uh, the chairmanship, and Mr. Yang Yunqing shifted to be CEO. So since then, the, our business uh, has significant changes. This graph shows the uh, the uh, profit change changes in 
profits. We see th this graph, this uh, fluctuation. Uh, in in one in quarter one, we usually have the ups and downs. So quarter one is the low season. So the next graph shows. Since then, we for five consecutive quarters, we have been the uh, fastest growing uh, uh, one among all of the PC makers in the world. That that red. The red line shows Lenovo's gr uh, the growth rate of Lenovo, and the blue line shows the market average in the PC industry. In the previous quarter, the the average growth rate uh, of the PC industry was three percent, and the growth rate of Lenovo was twenty one percent. So in a meeting with uh, President Obama not long ago, I briefed him about that our, the U.S. PC market's uh, average growth rate was 5 percent, and Lenovo's growth rate was 35 percent in that market. I paid special attention to his uh, expression, and I saw that he was a little surprised about that fact and number. So our market share increased significantly. In, within these two years, we, our market share rose from 8.3% uh, to 10.3%, not including the part from NECPC we acquired recently. I believe that all of you are very, uh, are very interested in knowing why we can deliver this and what changes has happened. Apparently, uh, during the financial crisis, why Lenovo incurred such a big losses, financial losses, one of the key reasons was at Lenovo at that point, the, the majority of Lenovo's profit was in China. When the financial crisis occurred, China market uh, moderated and slowed down. So our business in China uh, significantly reduced. That reduction impacted the overall performance of the com company, dragged the overall revenue size and profit. And then we had to lay off and downsize, and the morale was very low. In the previous quarter, in last quarter, the market situation repeated. That is, China's, the China market's growth moderated. So China's market's growth was similar to that of the uh, rest of the world. In that situation, our profits increased against, uh, against inc increased 148% over a year ago not including uh, some extra money profits we allocated for brand building and R&D. Why? Because our, ba our business is balanced. The uh, U.S. part contributed a large proportion of profits. And uh, in, in emerging markets, we were working on market share. And also, we made monies in those markets as well. So with the balanced development, we have this good result. So all this happened not by chance. It's because the uh, top management team, it because the top management uh, developed the right strat strategy. They call it protect and attack. Where to attack, where to protect to ensure profitability. They had very uh, th thorough analysis and then, then upheld that strategy for two years. And the, the result was very apparent. How did they come up with the strategy? It was developed by people. Who are they? So I wanted to say that CEO uh, led and uh, organized uh, a very uh, united, a very uh, productive top leadership team. Uh, 
this uh, leadership team has these characteristics. First, they prioritize the company first. They put the company's interests first. They have the right attitude. Two years ago, uh, when the company had financial losses, big losses, these, some of the members, we have nine members, one is CEO, and uh, the remaining uh, members for the remaining part, four are Chinese and four, are, uh, four Westerners, one Dutch and three Americans. The COO was an American. This is a very balanced leadership team. I believe at that point, when, uh, when uh, the financial crisis occurred, when we had losses, the members on that top leadership team was not that confident about the company's uh, future. They, they were not sure of the company's future. After two years of time, they, this, the members on this leadership team, they, they really believe in this company. They, they are working with a very strong sense of ownership. So attitude-wise, attitude they put the company's interests first. The second, secondly, they have a very good approach and a mechanism of carrying out their work. These nine people, they meet once a month. Uh, either could be in Japan, Europe, or uh, 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 in merging market, they went to that market and uh, analyzed that market. They didn't come up with any major decisions within very short uh, time or in a hurry. They did thorough analysis and explorations. After rounds of discussions, they made a final dis decision. In that process, each member of this uh, leadership team will think about what is his role in this decision. And once the decision is confirmed, how he, or how he can implement that decision under his realm. So in this way, when a, a decision is made, it will be executed in very smoothly. So what makes what is different from other companies? Other companies may claim that we have a good leadership team, but actually, they, the CEO has uh, too much power. Usually, the CEO, for example, for acquisition, the CEO would discuss with CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and then and uh, discuss with and and uh, discuss with uh, Chief Strategy Officer. After the discussion, they will make the decision. And uh, they also have a leadership team, and then they will ask the remaining members on their top leadership team whether you will agree or not, yes or no, quickly, to ask them to give their answers very quickly, in a very hurried way. So our mechanism is different. This leadership team, after, after a while of integration and uh, adaptation, they've they uh, develop their ways. And also members on this top leadership team will also be re uh, replaced. For unqualified ones, we will replace him. But we will, we will talk straight. We will talk clearly. And also we will offer a kind of a parachute to a kind of face-saving way to uh, leave this uh, position and to reduce negative impact to minimum. So, so up to now, Lenovo's uh, the the improvement of Lenovo's uh, business performance. The major reason was because we have a good top leadership team, which can come up with very sound strategies, and uh, and uh, they can execute the said strategy, and also and uh, the whole staff has a very sound, healthy st uh, culture. They changed from the previous status of people don't care about this company to the current status where employees really care and love their company. So we turned over, we turned around our business performance. I, so I want to explore this topic. So so you see this uh, rooftop shape. 
This is a, uh, it describes our uh, philosophy about management. The yellow roof, uh, we call it, we call it operational level management. What does it mean? It means a company. A company needs to carry out various functions like R&D, procurement, sales, marketing, and etc. All this kind of stuff, we call them operational level management, like what I uh, mentioned just now in 1994. From 1994 to 2001, we, we successfully uh, improved ourselves. We, we worked on uh, inventory, worked on uh, R&D about technology. All those belong to this uh, yellow roof. In this, on this level, different companies have different ways of doing it. For example, internet content companies uh, has have different ways of operating versus manufacturing business, hardware, com like software company and service company and a restaurant business. They have their different ways of operations. Today, Steve Jobs has delivered uh, the uh, outstanding pad. Whatever he does also belongs to the yellow roof part. Each company has its own uh, ways of doing it. The blue part, we call it commonality of management in all types of companies. This is another thing. We, we think it's a common, common characteristics of all kinds of companies. We have, we, we have the three keys to management. The first key is to build a good top management team. Secondly, how to develop strategy. Thirdly, to take people with you. How to ensure that your employees will be highly motivated to work. We call it the three management keys. I think that for business school uh, students, these are ver not very like kind of jargon-like terms for business schools. But this is just our understanding about company management. Uh, so, so this is not in a strictly sense very academic or very, very deep uh, like kind of uh, business school type of jargons. <coughs> the three management teams. For the three men, I wanted to uh, focus on the second point, how to develop strategies. Whether a company can, can come up with the right strategies is important. When I, uh, I started to run companies 27 years ago in China, within those 27 years of time, my fellow entrepreneurs and uh, fellow companies of uh, Lenovo, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, we were on the same stage to take trophies, and uh, some of them faded out of history. A lot of them, a, a lot of the fa failure cases happened because they couldn't adapt to address the environment. They could not keep pace with the environment to come by coming up with the right strategies. For example, in 1984, in around uh, 1984, when a per PC rose or became popular, old companies like Wong Computer and DEC and Uniwork, they, they insisted on their own strategy path they didn't. Uh, they didn't uh, comply with and address the environment. The final result that they failed, they disappeared because of their strategic fault. Another case, for example, like the uh, film camera film company. Like, if it doesn't adjust uh, strategies now, it's a digital camera era. The old uh, film camera would be uh, absolute. So for today's Lenovo, we are facing a consumer 
customers. They, they are very keen about pad product. If we just stuck, we, if we just stick to the old computer product, if we don't adjust, we will, we will, we will face a serious uh, prospect. So companies need to adjust and fine tune its strategies according to external environment. Not only just. Not only just industry uh, environment, but also uh, policy environment, including the, uh, for example, like the appreciation of RMB currency. For example, a lot of companies on southeast coast of China, they have very low profit margin. If they, they, they rely on the uh, advantages of RMB uh, foreign exchange, sooner or later they will have trouble. So they have to uh, adjust their uh, strategies timely. Another reason is that with the development of companies, uh, they need to adjust, uh, make adjustment internally. So I'm not going to elaborate on this. So we have a seven-step methodology about how to develop strategy. I'm not going to go to details. First, a company must have a vision, something the company really wanted to pursue. What for? I believe that uh, a lot of uh, books like Build to Last, a lot of uh, books uh, uh, treat a vision as something very uh, important and lofty. So for uh, managers of companies, we, we need vision, but, but we also need to really believe in our vision and leave it. A lot of companies have visions, but they really don't leave it and, and practice it. Secondly, is a midterm goal, like three to five year uh, goal, what you wanted to deliver with that time frame. Thirdly, we call it strategic path. Through what kind of path can you uh, reach your midterm goal? For example, I have an example here. In 1996, Lenovo was trying to go global in 1996 and seven. I and my, uh, we were uh, kind of uh, enticed by environment that we, we thought that we wanted to expand into Hong Kong and Southeast Asia. We sent uh, p employees to those markets to expand our business. And then we paid a visit to Taiwan. We discovered that a lot of uh, Taiwan companies were very competent in technology and manufacturing, but they didn't have their brands. Why? Because their domestic market was very small. While Lenovo was having such a vast and such a big company, and we have a big brand in China, why should we uh, go so far instead of focusing on what is available locally? So we decided to, to work on the China market to treat it as a bottom line market. So we treat this as a strategic path. No matter what kind of uh, comments, encouragement from external uh, parties, say, uh, like saying good opportunities are in the Middle East or the US, we stick to our strategy of focusing on China. So a company must have very clear strategic path. For example, given the emergence of mobile internet, how can we address it? Are we going to do hardware or uh, software? We have to do thorough analysis to come up with an answer. So after this strategic path, who this this uh, strategic path will be done, will be executed by different departments. Each department will has its uh, leader. Whether we can find a appropriate person for that role. So only, if you only have strategic path, you won't succeed. How to find the people and retain them and train them. These are very important. And then the next is specific, specific steps. Finally, uh, organizational uh, structure and how can you incentivize, incentivize people. 
Of course, there are a lot of detailed uh, stuff. I'm not going to uh, go to details. So this is about strate strategy development. In addition to strategy, there is another important thing. We put it, taking people with you. It means, it, it refers to three things. First, how to ensure that your employees love your company. If e an employee doesn't love his company, the company won't succeed. And secondly, and how to ensure that employees know how to do their work. An individual and how an individual and how a team can work if efficiently. And thirdly, what kind of a organizational structure system should we put into place to run the execution? There are a lot of uh, content in this topic. I just wanted to highlight two things. To make companies love the company and to make uh, to give them ensure that they know how to work. We need two things, uh, incentives and culture. I'm not going to explain incentives. I wanted to talk more about corporate culture. Lenovo, around 2003, uh, we invited uh, researchers from famous universities in China to research together with us to research about how culture is formed in a company and how it functions and how culture can be uh, passed and cascaded. We spent six months to do the research. And, uh, and our final uh, conclusion was we thought that for Lenovo's culture, which might differ from other companies' case, we, we define it as two elements. We define it first as core, cal core values. Second is approach and methodology. I'm not going to focus on approach and methodology. I want to mostly talk more about uh, core values. Lenovo is a global company. Its core values uh, differ a little bit from legend. Lenovo's core values are two things. We do what we say. We own what we do. So to unite the top leadership team and to this is an element to unite the top leaders, unite the whole staff. No matter how capable you are, if you do not buy in these core values, sorry, we cannot keep you here. So we have to make sure that we have a consensus on this. Uh, we do what we say means we have to think through before making pledge. And then if we make the pledge, we need to deliver it. Another element is uh, putting people first. About uh, putting people first, I wanted to share with you some, some stories about Lenovo. Uh, there are some stories. Uh, there are some photos. Please look at the upper left one, that is a farm uh, to uh, raise pigs. In Le Lenovo ran a farm to raise pigs in 1989. Why? Because in 1988, China was under reform, was, was in the uh, process of reform, and uh, it suddenly had huge uh, price hikes and, uh, uh, and inflation, and the uh, food's price rose significantly. We have had times of, uh, we have had times of, of so we stopped, and I I was concerned that our employees uh, stopped. So so we uh, spent 10,000 RMB to uh, open a farm to raise pigs, to to provide pigs and pork to our employees in case that 
the uh, situation further uh, deteriorated. But later on, the uh, microenvironment improved, so we uh, closed this uh, farm. It shows that a company needs to really think about uh, employees' concerns. The second uh, photo shows right upper level. Uh, a group of young people standing in front of uh, uh, apartment building. In the 1990s, in state-owned uh, enterprises and institutions, the housing of individuals will be given by, by the employer, um, depending on your uh, years of employment, your title. They have a rating system to allocate apartment to each individual. But the apartment was very small, very, uh, very. But for Lenovo, it's, we are not young people. Young people working for Leno Lenovo do not have these benefits uh, share, uh, enjoyed by those from state-owned. So we we uh, roll out a, a, a historical uh, policy. After, so employees pay their down payment, and then uh, the company provide uh, sponsorship to a bank, so they can buy apartments via uh, uh, like uh, loans. This is very uh, new thing, and really. Uh, when I was uh, when I was f 40, I lived in a 12 square meter room where seven people live in that lived in that room. It's it's unimaginable, maybe by some of you. So when we started to run companies, I wouldn't want to see that our employees will live in that condition at their 40s. So we create some policies to allow them to live in to live in this uh, apartments. There are some important people in this. Yang Yunqing is one of them. And the other photos, uh, the grassland, the uh, the meadows, uh, people on that uh, grassland are retirees from Lenovo. They enjoy very good p retirement pensions because Lenovo did reforms in a share structure. So we used our bonus to buy some of the shares and uh, allocate the shares to some of our employees. So after they retired, they will have uh, dividends out of that shares. So after, so those retirees are enjoying very good life. I can say that among retirees, retirees from Lenovo are the most happy group in China. Every year they are uh, vacationed in uh, overseas countries. They, they vacation twice uh, domestic because they are too old to move now. They, they cannot go to so many, many places each year. The uh, photo on the uh, bottom left corner shows the young people. Putting people first means to align uh, individual employees uh, interests with the uh, company's interests. Whatever employees want are also what the company wanted to want and can be fulfilled by the company. So we have to be responsible for the careers of our employees. We are not doing the same thing like other companies, where uh, those companies give high uh, bonuses to employees when the results was good and fire employees when their performance or the re results was bad. In the past, we had to lay off too. But those kind of actions were uh, the old uh, action. In the, we will learn from that. We will improve our practice. Our uh, senior vice president in charge of HR is sitting in this room. Uh, just now, I, I talked about the top leadership team uh, blending East and West practices and people. Our HR head is in that uh, is in that team. He, he's sitting here now. He can guarantee what I just mentioned. He will deliver what I said just now. So, and, and how corporate culture is formed and inherited. I want to mention three things. First, first to unify thoughts and mentality. What is our core values? The top, the very top management team and should, should be aligned with the board and everyone have to reach a consensus. And secondly, uh, is, is communicating and cascading down how to align culture with business. When we talk about business, 
how can we uh, incorporate culture and uh, implement it? There is a approach to do that. I, what I really wanted to mention is the third thing, which are the is the sentence in red. I saw this sentence uh, uh, on the wall in the office, in Lenovo's office in Raleigh. Leading by example is not an important way to inspire people, but the only way, only the word, really um, gives, really impressed me. I think that leading by example is the most important thing. I have a personal experience about this. I share with you uh, several stories. We start at 3.30? Who can... When should I wrap up? When should I wrap up? So 4.40, I have, I, well, I can only uh, tell one story, even though the stories are very uh, interesting. When we just started Lenovo, the company had very limited budget and uh, funding. We had uh, 200,000 RMB, and within the first three months, uh, 140,000 thousand of that was cheated by somebody else. What we, did we do? We worked, uh, we worked for a Hong Kong company. That Hong Kong company sold its computers to a Chinese client. What we do is to, to work on behalf of that Hong Kong company to uh, kind of uh, check the machines and also do the training. And uh, the people who who is in charge of the checking was Mr. John, is who who was a vice president. That night, he was very emotional and very nervous, and came to us saying that the Hong Kong side executive uh, gave him uh, uh, some cash, 800 Hong Kong dollar cash, and he asked, "What can we do about this cash?" Well, we, we figured out that the, uh, the uh, purpose of the uh, cash was to give some favor if the uh, quality was, could not pass our checking st standard. So that cash was meant to give that to that Mr. Zhang himself. But Mr. Zhang brought, brought the cash up to the company because we need so much, we need so much, need money so much. So we need to figure out a way to uh, where we uh, we not to piss off our, not hurt our uh, customers' uh, interest, and we asked Miss Zhang to talk to the Hong Kong executive. If we do as what we should, would you give me the cash? The uh, Hong Kong executive said, "Yes, please, please do it, and and." Please do whatever what you should. And Mr. Zhang turned the 800 Hong Kong dollar to the company. This case shows that it shows that China was chaotic at that time. It also illustrated that Mr. Zhang was something which was recognizable. We wouldn't allow individuals to uh, make personal benefits on the expense of the company. There was another minor story. What, in the past, I smoked. I, I smoked for uh, starting from the graduation of co from college until when I started to run the company. Because of poverty, I, the, the cigarettes I smoked was very cheap. Because in those days, uh, trying to socialize, uh, you have to pass a couple of cigarettes to, your, to, to the other party to show your courtesy and to, uh, to, uh, to socialize. But because of the cigarettes are tied to work, we have to use high quality cigarettes, co which cost like uh, 0.5 yuan per box. So, so so it's hard to distinguish between cigarettes you smoke for yourself and you smoke for work purpose. So we have several 
uh, employees who smoked. We don't want that kind of uh, uh, practice to hurt the company's profit. So four of us decided to quit smoking. And then I quit it. It has been a long time. And I have maintained that until today. Thank you. It's a big pity for me. I smoked for 18 years. I have, I have I never smoked any good cigarettes. I smoked very bad cigarettes. This uh, story is an example for employees. At that time, we have a worker. He, uh, uh, when he, when we man, uh, outsource the manufacture of a cart, when he do the reimbursement, reimbursement, he marked up the number. It was 20 kwai, and he uh, he wrote down 30 kwai. And then, when this was exposed, the company decided to fire him. He was very painful and uh, and he cried he swear that he would not do that again and this employee later became an outstanding employee of the company from uh, 1990 to 2000 Whenever we have new hires, we, we, we tell them some of the principles of Lenovo, such as shouldn't pursue personal interests at the expense of the company. Otherwise, we will, we will, we will penalize according to the principle. And then 10 of our employees committed. They didn't quite believe the policy, 10 of them were sent to prison. And three of them, after they uh, were set free, they came to me to apologize to me. Because we already said the words up front, but they still committed the crime. It's because that we lead by example and we apply the principle to everyone. So, so this kind of execution didn't incur any uh, complaints in this company because I and my uh, fellow colleagues, because we were doing business in uh, computers, a lot of our, uh, all of our kids are majoring, uh, were majoring in computer science. My son, he attended uh, Columbia University, majoring in computer science. My daughter. Uh, uh, after graduation from Peking University, he attended graduate school in computer science in Harvard. We have a, a principle. No matter how outstanding our kids were, they were not allowed to enter the company to avoid the situation where it's hard to manage them. So we have a policy of no kids of executive are allowed to enter company. My two children are in the investment business now. They told me that they they say that the reason that we end up in investment because that if we wanted to work in computer science, Lenovo is the best company, but we are not allowed, so we have to wind up in investment business. And some of the political leaders recommend their uh, children to to get a job at Lenovo, we have a policy. No matter how uh, powerful their parents are, for that hiring decision, it, the decision requires the signature concurrently of three uh, VPs. And also, we don't give that new hire any special treatment. And that new hire should not disclose his or her identity. So, so we, this will allow fair management so anyone who are penalized, everyone think it's fair. We, because we don't have uh, like special treatment of some special people. So this is the real execution of leading by example. So we run out of time. And another factor is how to build top leadership team. So by doing this, in this way, we rerun the company for 26 years, and the company is getting uh, better and bigger. In 2000, uh, Lenovo had uh, we uh, diver diversified into new businesses, and many people didn't think that we will succeed in other businesses because they think we are a computer maker, because we have the three management keys. Yes.
So that is my speech. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing those insights. Um, we have some mics to go around the room, so uh, please don't be shy. Just put your hand up and I will point. I think there's uh, one, one over there. Uh, can I speak Chinese? Mandarin? Okay. Uh, Liu Zhong, I'm Yang, I'm the Shang Xue Yuan MBA in the Shang Xue Yuan. You mentioned that the environment should be adjusted to the uh, can you stop after every sentence for translation? Oh, sorry. Because yeah. there will be translation. Right. Uh, okay, you said just now that uh, companies have to adjust their strategies according to their external environment. And you also noted that the uh, personal devices that people are using are changing very quickly. So as a manufacturer traditionally of PC devices, can you tell us what uh, Lenovo sees for itself in the years coming ahead and what steps you plan to take? Well, we do have some uh, uh, technology reserves at uh, our disposal. So, for example, in China, we've already brought out our own smartphone called Le Phone. And uh, this quarter, we will be introducing our tablet computer. And but the important thing is that for these devices, we are going to be first oriented towards our Chinese consumers. And therefore, on an Android platform, for example, we're going to be adding content specifically tailored to the desires of the Chinese market. Uh, so we will be using the China market as our, found, as our foundation or our base and then building from that to uh, go globally. Thank you. I think there was one behind, just behind you. Lady in blue. Uh, 本来我第一个问题也想问刚才的我介绍一下Actually, the question I plan to ask was already asked by the previous questioner, but I might introduce myself very quickly. I started my first job at uh, Lenovo, actually, and then uh, after that, I went out to work myself on um, software development, and I'm now here studying at the Haas School uh, from the Beijing Guanghua School of Management. Uh, thank you. Um, 刚才第一个问题之后呢，我就想问一下，现在因为那个很多硬件那个服务商，包括IBM，它是把PC卖给联想，自己比较多是在做服务，从软件做服务来来赢取它的收入。另外像Dell还有包括HP，目前在国内都
计划。My question is that、uh, many companies like IBM have、um, divested themselves of their hardware business. For example, IBM sold their PC manufacturing business to Lenovo, and、uh, they're now using、um, software and services as their main、uh, sources of、uh, revenues. And this is true also of companies like HP and Dell, which, although they do make hardware, they're still increasingly counting on、uh, services for revenue. So my question is that、um, Legend Holdings has two. Pieces, a Lenovo, which makes hardware, and Digital China, which does、uh, more of the、uh, uh, computer services. So, how will you put these two pieces together? Since this seems to be the global trend. 联想呢，呃，由于他自己本身的这个出身，大概并不准备向服务方向为主，主要是还是想从硬件整合为主，有点想向三星的这个道路，可能更像我们要走的道路。Given its own uh, history, uh, Lenovo plans to stay on the path of、uh, primarily focusing on hardware.、Uh, so it will be moving more in the direction that Samsung is going. Do we have a question on this side of the room? Yes, there. Liu Xuanzheng, hello. My name is Ning Hu. I'm a Berkeley University student. Today, I'm going to ask a question about the future. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about、uh, entrepreneurial uh, work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, and I have a question about entrepreneurial work. Okay, I'm a senior here at Berkeley, 而很多专家学者指出，中国创业市场不缺风投，不缺私募，往往很多时候风投和私募都在抢好的项目。呃、uh, ，many people have said that in China there's、uh, no lack of ideas and no、um, 没有风投没有呃不不怕不缺风投不嗯。Yeah, venture capitalists. Yeah, there's no shortage of venture capitalists or of ideas. 嗯、uh, ，中国最缺的是天使投资人，呃，缺的是能够。提供不仅是钱，而且是人脉和经验的人。啊哈 ，So what? But what people、um, in China,、uh, what China lacks are people who have the、um, the talent or the、uh, the instinct for being entrepreneurs.、Uh, actually, no.、Um, no. What China lacks is the angel investors, the people who not only can provide money but also experience and、uh, social capital to the entrepreneurs.、Okay. Are you reading something? Because if I can, I can just look over your shoulder and translate it that way. <laughs> or, or you well, can. I can translate okay, myself. Okay, fine. Uh, in the United States, the talented angels are about 30,000. In China, the talented angels are about 300. 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 In China, Uh, the recorded number is uh, is not even 300. In China, however,、uh, there's not a lack of people who have the net worth to be an angel. There are 930,000 people with net worth of over、uh, 10 million Chinese yuan. 而我想问柳先生对这个问题有什么有什么看法？呃，怎么才能有力解决中国创业的瓶颈？怎么才能增加天使的数量、素质和影响力？ So my question is,、uh, what's your opinion about this issue? How do you increase the number of angel investors and their impact upon society? Thank you. 第一呢，我想跟你说，那个 PE 跟 VC 本身也是给投资者，呃呃，给这个被投企业，不仅是钱，也是要有增值服务的，啊，他们也依然需要增值服务。这个联想的。这个 VC 跟 PE 之所以还是做的比较好的一个重要原因，就是因为我们懂企业，能够给予增值服务。Uh, the first thing I should point out is that both、uh, venture capitalists and private equity investors do not just put money into these companies; they do、uh, give you、uh, added values to this company and give you that kind of guidance. So, for instance, in our case, in the case of Lenovo, we got a lot of that kind of support from our、uh, other investors. 
。至于数字呢，你说美国有九十几万，这个数字也可能是准确的，但是说中国只有三百个。天使投资这个数字肯定是不准确的。Now the number you quoted of angels in America may be correct, but certainly the number for China is incorrect because there are way more than 300 of them in China. 但是会是比较少。那个，呃，我想呢是这样，就是一开始的时候，天使投资大部分是需要有些这个家里的人或者朋友来帮忙。呃，这个才形成的，逐渐逐渐的才会形成一些专业的天使投资人和天使投资组织。在中国呢，由于对这个初办企业的人不了解，所以很多人不敢去做。啊，这个有一个过程。In China, though, it's true that the number of angel investors would be smaller than that in the United States. But what happens is that very often the um. Angel investors start off becoming angel investors because some friends or some family members ask them to help invest in their company, and only after they have many experiences with the sort of thing would they consider investing in some company that they're not so closely associated with personally. And this is understandable because if you don't know this um, would-be entrepreneur, people would be hesitant to invest. But uh, gradually, the number is growing. 联想办了一个叫做“天使投资”的班，每年呢有三十个人被选中，然后在这个班里边呢，一年呢上十二次课，通过上课完了以后，这个能够发现哪些人值得天使投资，哪些人不值得。And uh, Legend actually has a training program for angel investors. It uh, these people we choose thirty people each time, and they take. These lessons 12 times a year, and we've done three rounds of this training. And at the end of the, each round of training, the people who look like good prospects are then introduced to possible uh, supporters. Uh, 终于轮到我讲话，柳先生您好。呃，首先我要特别表达一下我对您的那个尊敬，因为我这个 Wonder 还有在看这个回顾这个第一季到第三季《赢在中国》，所以我把里面的整个细节都很了解。在这里我要很感谢您的时间，还有告诉我们这些创立的这个、创业的一些经历啊。呃，我今天有一个问题。Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I just wanted to particularly thank you for giving us this introduction. I'm a great admirer of yours. And uh, uh, well, way in China. Yeah, way back in China, I've been familiar, and I have a question that, that I'd like to ask right now. Oh, I today have a question. This question is quite broad. Ah, 就是说这个如今中国的这个市场，呃，这个宏观市场，我个人觉得比较比较混乱，包括这个通货膨胀率。还有这个房价，它每年的这个涨幅，啊，很多还有社会的这个不平衡、不平等现象越来越多，包括去年的炒炒各类的炒家在炒大米、炒苹果、乱七八糟这些炒的现象。Uh, my my question is actually a, on a rather macro level because the uh, overall macro economy of China right now seems to be rather chaotic. There are problems with inflation. There are problems with real estate prices, and also.、Um, Increasing social inequities, and last year, for example, there were several incidents of speculation in all sorts of things like apples and and all sorts of other everyday things. Ah, I, I, that question, basically, is to say, ah, I remember in China, ah, 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 再加上今天这个中小企业融资难，包括如果我们回国创业，估计是跟您二十年前创业完全是这个情况已经不一样了。And、uh, one person said that actually people like ourselves now, if we were to go back to China, we it would take us at least five to ten years of、uh, readjustment to be able to function in that kind of environment now. And so、um, perhaps the situation now is very different from the situation that you were in when you started your company 26 years ago. 所以我问题就是说，你有什么这种宏观上这种大的建议？就是说，如果我们这些海归将来有机会回到中国做事情的话，我们这些
这一代的中国青年要要要怎样，就是才能有机会成功？ Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't have time to finish. And the the other half of this question was that、um, because also small and medium enterprises have a very hard time raising funds to get their business going. So the question for Mr. Liu is:、um, uh, under these circumstances, those of us of this generation who want to go back to China, what suggestions or tips would you have for us to, if we wanted to go back and start up our own enterprises? That, first of all, there is a suggestion that. 回国以后呢，要有理想而不理想化，这话好翻译吗 ？Um, yes. The first thing I would say is that when you go back to China, you should have ideals, but you shouldn't be、uh, an ultra idealist. 然后呢，如果你真的要想创业的话，还是要把事情想清楚，你是不是真的要去做？要做的话，那就要坚定不移。不然的话，犹犹豫豫是做不成的。但是呢，刚一开始出来回去就创业，不管是海归还不是海归，都是会摔跟头的。你要把这个要想清楚。The second thing is that you really have to think it through whether whether you really want to start up a, a business and why what it exactly it is that you want to do and why you want to do it because you have to get that in your head、uh, in order to help you、um, stay the course. Uh, because inevitably you're going to encounter some setbacks, and I should also say that regardless of whether you're going back from America or whether you're someone from China, if you're just starting out and you're going to start a business, you should be prepared to take some bumps and lumps. Our that the risk investment has raised about 140 companies. About 7 or 80 are not successful in one year. Because uh, our uh, uh, venture capital company has invested in、uh, over a hundred companies,、uh, over 140 companies, and I'd say 70 or 80 of them were not successful. So I just give two suggestions. Five hundred to seventy percent. Seventy to eighty percent. Seventy or eighty percent of them failed to succeed at least the first time around. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. So if you want to start a business, you better think it through very carefully beforehand. 啊、uh, ，Intel。Intel。啊，我的问题是，像您说的，如果联想的 strategy 是像 Samsung 一样做整个的路线整合，啊，因为当时 Eric Kim 在啊九十年代的时候帮助 Samsung 成功，他是帮助 Samsung build 一个新的 brand， 然后他是做整个的 vertical integration， 所有的 technology 的发展，包括 R&D 方面，包括他的各个芯片设计。Okay, so、um, you said just now that Lenovo wants to go down a path that's rather similar to what Samsung is doing, and、uh, at that time,、um, Eric Kim did a lot of work in putting Samsung together, a lot of vertical integration、um, to make it what it is today. Ah,、uh, 现在联想已经啊、uh, 利用这个和 IBM PC 的并购，打出联想的品牌 ，build 自己的 brand 了。但是你认为下一步，比方说联想想成为像三星这样的，把中啊、uh, 中国的品牌推向世界？能够 build 一个整个的啊、uh, 集团的话，你认为还缺哪部分？就是说啊， uh, 除了一个品牌，还有什么东西？比方说 R&D 方面，还有其他的方面，认为联想现在面对的最主要的问题是什么 ？So、um, Lenovo, by buying the IBM、um, PC operations, has already established itself as a brand, and it's、uh, got a very secure foundation in China, and now it can start.、Um, Moving into the global marketplace, and I want to know, in the process of doing this, what you think uh, is um, Lenovo lacks the most. Like, what is its weak link? Would it be R and D, or would it be something else? 缺人、缺钱、缺经验。Money, <laughs> people, and experience. 所以，所以我们真的要走到那个路还很漫长。我们要分阶段，一步步的走。So it's a very long road. We still have to travel. We have to do it in phases, and we have to do it slowly. Just, but what is the part that's the most, the weakest link right now? 没没没听清楚，你现在现在最最最最弱的环节是哪？现在最弱就是现在，你认为你们会侧重的重点在哪方面
我们先第一步，可能是先要把这个呃制造的能力把它补足。But as, as a first step, we probably need to build up our manufacturing capabilities. 然后减这个这个需要投入比较少，但是又比较容易做的关键部件啊的部件上开始。这个呢，就是要我们内部要反复的去讨论。And then maybe start with the things where um this the initial uh investment is not that great, but which where we would be able to um uh. Produce all the components appropriately, and so that's going to take a lot of repeated study and analysis to identify. 简短简短的说呢，回答这个问题呢，最好是 CEO， 但是呢，他此刻肯定不会跟你说。嗯。Uh, to tell you the truth, the the best person to answer this question is a CEO, but then again, for sure, he won't tell you. <laughs> well, I know there are a lot more questions, but Chairman Liu has another. Obligation coming up, and so I think we're we're going to have to stop it here and thank Chairman Liu for really fascinating insights.